In this tutorial, I will show you how to create this procedural orange peel material in Blender. If you'd like to help support me as well as purchase this material, then you can get the project files for this tutorial on my Gumroad store, and all of my patrons over on my Patreon page also get access to my procedural materials. So checking out my Gumroad store and Patreon page are great ways to help support the channel. And if you'd like to purchase more of my materials, you can also check out my Blender procedural material packs, so they're packs of 10 realistic procedural materials created with Blender's procedural nodes. Links in the description where you can purchase on my Gumroad store. And if you'd like to learn how to create all of my procedural materials, then you can check out my Blender procedural material playlist on YouTube. Again, links are in the description. Now I am going to be using the displacements in the node editor just to give a little bit of random bumpiness and lumpiness to this orange, because oranges aren't perfectly smooth and perfect perfectly round, they are just a little bit bumpy and each one kind of has a slightly different random shape. And so to use the displacements in the node editor, you will need to be using the cycles render engine. Now this is totally optional, you don't have to use the displacements in the node editor if you don't want to. You could just model a basic orange 3D model and then add this material onto the orange. And this procedural material also does work pretty well in Blender Eevee. You can see here is the material in Blender Eevee and I think it looks pretty nice as well. I'm going to be using cycles though because I want to use the displacement and it also just looks a bit more realistic in cycles. So let me just show you what I have set up in the 3D space. So I just pressed Shift A and I went right down here to Mesh and I added an Icosphere and then right behind me if you click and open up the Add Icosphere settings I just turn the subdivisions up to like a 6 and that way we have a very nice subdivided Icosphere and it's very round and smooth and also because I am going to be using the displacements this will give more geometry so that it can displace the mesh just a little. And then to get some nice realistic lighting over here on the world. I added in this Failzer Forest 01 1K HDRI and this is from polyhaven.com so links in the description if you'd like to use the same HDRI that I'm using and that'll just help to give some nice realistic lighting for this material. And then also to get some nice bright lighting kind of shining on the object I added this plane here so this is just a plane with a subsurf modifier so that it is circular and then I gave it an emission material with a strength of 30 and if you're using Blender EV, the emission isn't actually going to emit light because that only works in cycles. So if you're using Blender EV, I would just press Shift A and instead of using that plain light, I would just add like an area light. And then I will also be using the Node Wrangler add-on in this tutorial, so if you don't have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, you can just click on Edit and then open up the Preferences and then just head over to the Add-ons tab and then search for the Node Wrangler and then you can just check mark the Node Wrangler add-on. So I have the 3D space right here and I am in the rendered view and then I have the shader nodes right here. So I'm just going to click on New to add a new material. And I'm just going to rename this material to Procedural Orange Peel. So to start off, let's press Shift Day. I'm going to go to the search here and I'm going to search for the Voronoi texture. Let's just drop the Voronoi texture right here. And then using the feature from the Node Wrangler, you can just hold down the Control and Shift key and then select different nodes. And that is going to preview the node. It's going to use this viewer node right here and it's going to preview the node on our object so we can actually see what it's looking like. And then with this Voronoi texture still selected, I'm going to press Control T and that is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping behind the Voronoi. Now I don't really need the mapping node because the mapping node is just used to transform like the location, rotation, and scale of the texture, but I don't need to do that. So I'm going to click on the mapping node and then I will press X to delete it. And then I want to use the object coordinates. So I'm going to plug the object up to the vector on the Voronoi. And the object coordinates is going to place the Voronoi texture on the objects more evenly. So what we're doing right now is we're creating the base color for our shader. And so if you look closely at orange peel, it has little tiny colors colored dots and the colors are kind of orangey and yellowish. So what I want to do is I want to click on the F1 and I'm going to instead change this to smooth F1 and that way the edges are going to be more smooth. You can see there is this smoothness value so we can make those edges more smooth. Now I'm going to turn it this smoothness value to like a 0.3 on the Voronoi texture. And then also on the scale here I'm going to turn the scale up to like a 75 so that there are much more of those little dots. So we're going to use this as the base color on the orange peel. 
Now these colors aren't really what I want. This is just black and white. And I want to instead make some orangey colors and some yellow colors. So I'm going to press shift A. Let's go to the search here. And I'm going to search for a color ramp node. And let's just drop the color ramp node right in here. So the distance from the Voronoi is going to go into the color ramp. And then I can take the color and I can plug that into the base color of the principled. And then I can control shift and select the principled BSDF to preview that. So now let's change the colors by changing the color ramp. So I'm going to click on the white color right here, and then I'm going to click on this color, and I'm going to make this kind of a yellowy orangish color, and it's going to be pretty bright. And if you want to use the same exact color that I'm using, then you can go over to the hex value, and you can punch in a hex value of FF. 7d00 that is the exact color that i'll be using and then let's click on the black tab right here and this one is going to be very bright and it's going to be a very similar color but it's going to be a little bit more towards the red and the color that i'll be using for this one is a hex value of ff 6400. So if you control shift and then select the color ramp, you can preview that color. So if I zoom in there, you can see it kind of looks a little bit yellowish and then it has those orange dots. And that's exactly what I want for the color. So I'm just going to control shift and select the principal BSDF again. Now I want to allow just a little bit of light to be going through the orange peel. It is pretty shiny, but I just want to add a little bit of subsurface and that'll just allow a little bit of light to go through the orange peel. So I'm going to turn the subsurface value to just like a 0 0.05 so very small just a 0 0.05 now right now it's just kind of making the orange peel look a bit lighter and that is because of this subsurface color if you make this bigger you can see it says subsurface color so we can just change this so I'm going to click on the white tab and I'm going to make it very bright and then I'm going to make it kind of like an orangey red color and if you want to use the exact same color that I'm using on the subsurface color if you go to the hex value I'm going to be using Using a hex value of E7 2E00. And now you can see that that subsurface is just making it look slightly more red. So now I want to give the orange peel texture some bump. So I'm going to click on the Voronoi texture and I'm going to press Control Shift D. So Shift D will duplicate nodes, but if you press Control Shift D, that is going to duplicate the node, but it's going to keep everything plugged up to the node. Now why I'm duplicating this is because I want to change the size of the Voronoi texture, because if I Control Shift and then select this Voronoi texture, you can see that's pretty small, but for the normal of the orange peel I don't want the bumps to be that small because that's pretty small so I'm going to use a separate Voronoi texture for the normal so I will just control shift and select the Voronoi texture so on the scale here I'm going to instead change it from 75 to just like 37 so I think 37 is a much better size all right so now what I want to do is I want to take this texture and I want to put it into the normal to give it some fake bump so let's take the distance value and I'm going to plug that into the normal and then I can control shift and select the principal BSDF. Now we're having some shading issues and that is because this is black and white data. You can see it is a gray dot, but then this normal here is purple and that is normal data. So we need to convert this black and white data into normal data. So to convert this, I'm going to press shift A. I'm going to go to the search here and I'm going to search for a bump node. So let's click on the bump node and we're going to add the bump node right in here. So what we want to do is actually plug the distance into the height value. So the gray is going to go into the gray and then the bump node is going to actually convert this to normal data so then the normal can go into the normal of the principled BSDF and now you can see that that is actually looking like it is popping out of the mesh now it's way too strong right now so on the strength value I'm just going to turn this way down to like a 0 0.08 just a 0 0.08 so it's much more subtle now but you can definitely still see that taking effect now I also want this Voronoi texture to control the roughness so let's take the distance and I'm going to put that into the roughness and that way some parts will be a little bit more rough and other parts will be a little bit more shiny and you can see that taking effect right there now I want more control over the roughness so I'm going to press shift a let's go to the search here and again I'm going to search for a color ramp so let's click on this color ramp and I'm going to drop it right in here between the Voronoi and the roughness so we can now play around with these colors and that's going to change how rough it is. So I'm going to click on this white one right here and I'm going to click on the color and I'm going to make this one a bit darker. And if I make the value darker, you can see it's going to be more shiny. Now I don't want it to be that shiny, so I'm going to turn this up a bit. But if you make the values darker, it's going to be more shiny. And if you make it lighter, it's going to be more rough. Now if you want to use the exact same color or value that I'm going to be using, I'm going to be using a hex value of C8C8C8. 
And you can see now that is a bit more shiny and that looks good because oranges are pretty shiny. And then on the black tab, I wanna change this as well. So I'm gonna click on the black tab, click right here on the color, and I'm gonna make this a bit brighter. And the hex value that I'll be using for this one is 333333. Three, 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 three. So just add six threes. So there we go, that is the exact color that I'll be using. So now that orange is pretty shiny and I think it does look pretty nice. All right, now I wanna add just a little bit of noise all over the orange piece. So what I'm going to do is press shift a let's go to the search here and I'm going to search for a noise texture Let's click on the noise texture and I'm just going to drop it right down here under the Voronoi And then just like all of these other textures I do want to use the object coordinates So let's take the object and we're just going to plug that into the vector of the noise texture And then to preview what the noise texture is looking like just control shift and select the noise texture And we can see that on the model So I'm going to turn the scale for this one up to like a 10 and then I also want to turn the detail here all the way up to the max, which is 15. So now I want to take this texture and I want to plug this texture into the bump. So what I can do is I can actually add multiple bump maps together. So I'm going to click on this bump node and I'm going to press shift D. Shift D will duplicate the bump node and I'm going to drop it right here after this bump node. So the normal can just go through the normal on the bump node, but we now have this extra height value that we can add data into. So I can take the factor from this noise texture and we are going to plug that into the height value of the bump. And then I can just control shift and select the bump node to preview it. So if you control shift and then select the first bump node, you can see that's what it's looking like. And then you can control shift and select the second bump node and you can see what that noise texture is doing. Now, I think this is actually just slightly too strong and I do want it to be pretty subtle. So on the second bump node, the one which the noise texture is going into, I'm just gonna turn the strength value down to like a 0.06. So it's just slightly less strong. And then I can control shift and select the principled BSDF to preview that. Now an orange peel material does have a bunch of little tiny bumps along the orange peel surface and if you zoom in there you can see you can definitely see that because we are using this Voronoi texture into this bump but I do just want to give it a little bit more bump so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bump node right here and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate it and let's just drop it right here one more time so now what I want to do is I want to take this Voronoi texture again we're going to take the distance and we're going to plug that into the height of this bump now you might be wondering why I'm adding another one because we already have this one so it's kind of pointless to add another one but this one I'm going to make a little bit more contrasty so the distance from this Voronoi is going to go into the height value of this bump but then to make it just a little bit more contrasty I'm going to press shift a let's go to the search here and I'm going to search for a color ramp so let's click on the color ramp and then just move the color ramp until that wire is highlighted and then just click right there to place it you could also just bring it down and then take this Voronoi take the distance and plug that into the factor and then the color ramp color is going to go into the height value so now I can control shift and select this color ramp and we are basically just going to make it more contrasty so to make it more contrasty I'm just going to click on the white tab and I'm going to drag it much closer to the black tab so I'm just going to bring it to right about there so you can now see that is much more contrasty whereas before if I control shift and select this Voronoi texture you can see that is much less contrasty but then if I control shift and select Select the color ramp now it's more contrasty and so those little dots are much smaller so now I can control shift and select the bump node we can preview what it's doing so if you select the bump node you can then press M and M is the shortcut key to mute a node so we've muted the node and now it's gray and so you're not able to see it anymore so you can see that's how it looks like before but then if I press the M key again with this bump node selected you can see that's what it's doing so there's the difference so it's just adding a little bit more bump right in the center of where those little dots are. So I'm now just going to control shift and select the principal BSDF to preview that. So we are almost done with this material, but I do just wanna give a tiny little bit of displacement in the displacement here in the material output. And that way it's just gonna make this orange 3D model just slightly bumpy. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, you could just model a orange 3D model, but I'm just gonna give it a tiny little bit of bump so that it's not perfectly round and it's not perfectly smooth. Now there is one thing that we need to do to get the displacement to work so I'm going to open up this side panel right here and I'm going to go over to the material properties now as I said at the beginning of this tutorial if you want to use the displacements in the node editor then you're going to need to use the cycles render engine because the node editor displacements will not work in blender EV so if you're using blender EV then you can just skip this part but I'm using cycles so I'm going to use the displacements so I'm just going to scroll down right here and this is on the material properties and I'm going to
going to open up the settings tab right here. And on the displacement, right now it's set to bump only, but I'm going to instead change it to displacement and bump. And that way we are telling the material that it can use the displacement. So I can just make this smaller to get it out of the way. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this noise texture and I'm going to press Control Shift D to duplicate that, but keep the wire plugged up. And I'm just going to stick it right down there. Now this noise texture is going to be used to control the displacement. Now I want to make the scale much smaller because if I control shift and select this noise texture you can see that scale is much too big and I just want to give it a tiny little bit of bumpiness here and there so on this scale value I'm going to turn this way down to like a 0.8 so just a 0.8 and now that is very subtle but you can see some parts are a little bit darker and some parts are a little bit lighter so just like with these bump nodes we converted color data or black and white data into normal data and so I need to do the same thing for the displacement because this right here this noise texture this is black and white data but this is not going to work th with the displacement because we need to actually convert it first to displacement data so to convert it to displacement data I'm gonna press shift a let's go to the search here and I'm going to search for the displacement node and I'm just gonna drop the displacement node right here under the principled BSDF so I can now just take the factor of the noise texture and I'm going to plug that into the height value of the displacement so this displacement node is going to convert any color data Data or black and white data into displacement data. So now I can take the displacement and I'm going to plug that up into the displacement on the material output. And then I can control shift and select the principal BSDF. Now you can see that is way too strong. It's really bumpy and oranges aren't that bumpy. And so I just want to give it a very, very subtle scale. So right here on the displacement node, I'm going to take the scale and I'm going to change that to like a 0.15 so just like a 0.15 so now it's very subtle but if you zoom in there kind of on the edges you can see it just looks a little bit lumpy and that just makes it look a little bit more realistic and then one more thing that I've done just to make this look a little bit nicer if you go right here to the side panel and you go right up here to the render properties I'm gonna go right down here and I'm gonna open up the color management and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure this is set to filmic and then on the look here I'm gonna change this to high contrast and that way it'll just pop out the colors and make it more contrasty. And there we have it. So there's the procedural orange peel material. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful and I hope you enjoyed it. And thank you so much for watching. And again, if you'd like to help support me and this channel, I am trying to create Blender tutorials and Blender content for a living. So if you'd like to help support me and this channel, then you can purchase this procedural material on my Gumroad store. And you also get access to my procedural materials on my Patreon page. And you can also check out my blender procedural material packs if you'd like to purchase more of my materials and that's also a great way to help support the channel and if you'd like to learn how to create all of my procedural materials then you can also check out my blender procedural material playlist on youtube the links are in the description but i hope you found this video helpful and thank you for watching